Hi, and welcome to the first episode in our IoT series where we'll talk about IoT on the corporate network. I'm your host, Stephanie Crawford. Today, I'll be joined by Dave Chen, Senior Marketing Manager, HPE Aruba Networking, and we'll talk about IoT on the enterprise campus. Thanks for joining me, Dave. Hi, Stephanie. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I look forward to the conversation. Since my focus is on enterprise IoT and your focus is on campus networking solutions, I'm looking forward to getting your insight on the intersection of the two because enterprise IoT just keeps growing. Gartner says that more than 15 billion IoT devices will connect to the corporate infrastructure by 2029. That's a lot of devices. It really is, Stephanie. And, you know, it's amazing how much technology has become more intertwined with the daily lives of uh, not just in our personal lives, but in the business world as well. If you start thinking about it from a corporate IT point of view, that's a lot of devices to manage, to monitor, uh, to troubleshoot but also to secure. So as we start thinking about how IoT becomes more intertwined with the general day-to-day of an IT person's lives, it's uh, there's some positives as well as some things that need to be improved on as far as systems go. Yeah, I know that's something that we think about at HPE Aruba Networking. So much, in fact, that IoT capabilities are built into the connect, protect, and automate layers of ESP, our edge services platform. With all those new IoT devices, it's far more efficient not to have to create an IoT overlay network. Yeah, I think that's a really cool thing to to, to focus in on is that when you start thinking about a general corporate network infrastructure, HP Ruben Networking Access Points can be used as an IoT platform. So in addition to the Wi-Fi spectrum that is supported by our connectivity devices, also be able to use a dedicated radio to support Bluetooth to support Zigbee devices. The access points can also be used to support other protocols just by uh, attaching a USB-based dongle uh, to the side of an access point. Yeah, and the AP's role in IoT just continues to evolve. And in addition to all the great hardware features that support IoT, there are also a lot of IoT-related features in Central. I totally agree. So when you're thinking about it from the infrastructure standpoint, there's a lot of devices that are supported Uh, that can be supported uh, in an IoT sense. From a software perspective as well, uh, HPE Aruba Networking has Central. So being able to take advantage of a software platform that can deliver a lot of great capabilities uh, to the infrastructure directly. So no matter where you're deploying IoT services, you can use Central to deliver client insights. So these client insights are able to be used to effectively identify using AI-based capabilities Uh, certain devices around the network, and whether they're IoT devices or uh, general network devices, you can then do things like profile as well as enforce policies based on those devices. So there's a lot of great things that can be done using Central. On top of that, from an IoT services perspective, IoT operations is also a capability in Central. So you can actually integrate with various services that are supported by Central um, without having to use or rely on an overlay system. So Central directly integrates with various third-party services so that you can deliver them directly over your existing network. No additional overlays required. Yeah, and that's got to save complexity and cost. So that's pretty cool. But what are you seeing? What kinds of trends are you seeing in campus environments, Dave? Yeah, so you start thinking about how IoT is delivered. You start thinking about how technology in general is focused. And cloud is, of course, becoming normal. What's normal? In a campus environment, as it relates to IoT, you you can support on-premises-based solutions, but you can also take advantage of a lot of capabilities instantly through the cloud. So cloud is becoming this, uh, sen- uh, providing the sense of normalcy uh, for an IoT deployment. In addition, if you start thinking about it from a user perspective, let's say, for example, an enterprise campus environment, employees are being asked to return to the office uh, in certain capacities. So no matter what an co- employee then is trying to accomplish in a campus environment or at the workplace, IoT has a great position or has a great opportunity to support providing a greater employee experience as well. Right. And we've seen that with an increase in hybrid work. A lot of offices are now starting to use IoT devices for things like hoteling and hot desking and taking advantage of occupancy sensors and similar devices to improve sustainability. But a lot of these new devices are headless and they're generating more and more data on the network. 
What's your take on that? Yeah, you know, there's so many different types of use cases that can be delivered using various IoT integrations. Let's take, for example, in the hotel environment. We are increasingly seeing the use of different wireless-enabled door locks. For example, Dormacaba or Bluetooth-based uh, door locks being used in the hotel environment to provide an easier way for end users, or in this case, customers, to be able to access their rooms. On top of that, there's so many different use cases you can think of in retail as it relates to point-of-sale systems, as it relates to the physical security space, how you can tie in more of the facilities-based technologies into IT systems. In general, there's this trend now where you're going to see IT becoming much more important or involved in the general business case of deploying IoT systems. IT and facilities really go hand-in-hand in a lot of different scenarios here. On top of that, given all these different types of IT deployments that are happening now, security is becoming much more of a pervasive point of conversation. I've spoken to many customers in recent um, past few months, and in particular, a CIO I spoke with said that they spend over 50% of their time on security-related topics. Security has always been a challenge, right? It's always been a concern. It's always been, some, been something you've been focusing on as an IT person. However, now the traditional notion of a perimeter truly becomes a point of conversation as it relates to cloud-based services related to IoT. Right. And those are two huge topics. In fact, we have an upcoming episode in the series that'll be all about IoT security. So digging a little deeper on the return to the office piece, what are some of IT's new challenges that IoT can help with? So in general, there are so many different ways that IT can support uh, the office or the return to the office kind of situations. I think the most important thing really is end user experience. How do we ensure that employees or guests or other visitors, as they come into the office space footprint, how do we ensure that they have the best possible experience and that they can take advantage of various resources to increase or improve collaboration? So if you start thinking about different ways that technology can support that, there are ways that you can deploy different sensors to simulate the end user experience, troubleshoot and identify when problems may occur. You know, using the HP Ruby Networking uh, UXI sensors or user experience insight sensors, uh, you can deploy these anywhere in the environment, uh, whether it's a campus or even in a remote office or a branch environment. Have it run and simulate an actual end user's experience when they're trying to connect to Dropbox, to a Google service, or to some other service, for example, a Zoom. Being able to simulate that end user experience and then be able to identify when potential problems may occur can actually proactively help you identify when you should solve a problem so that the actual end user themselves never have to realize that there was an issue to begin with. On top of that, when I think about collaboration, especially I think about how I come into the, to my own office here at HP Ruby Networking, I want to make sure that when I enter a conference room, when I'm trying to collaborate with a peer that's offsite, that doing things like connecting to a Teams meeting is simple and intuitive. So whether that's obviously using a laptop, making sure that the quality of service is at the right levels when I'm connecting via a wireless network or otherwise, or when I'm entering a conference room, I wanna make sure that the experience of me connecting to a Teams environment is very seamless and secure. Likewise, when there's a problem or when there's a potential issue that may happen, I want to be confident in knowing that my facilities team or my on-site IT teams know that the problems that occurred. So IoT has a lot of ways that they can support these type of transitions or experiences, uh, even as it relates to supporting meeting room reservations as well. There's a lot of great ways to just improve and enhance that user experience. Yeah, that's interesting. It is hard to get folks excited about going into the office if the experience in their home office is better than it is on the corporate campus. In fact, we recently put together a report with Leesman along those lines. Uh, I'll link those in the show notes. So tell me, you mentioned that cloud is becoming normal. How does cloud management benefit corporate IT? That's a great question. So there's a lot of great benefits that you would typically expect from using a cloud management system. A lot of times, 
You can think of it from a deployment perspective, being able to visualize and issue configuration changes at will without having to dedicate a staff member to go on site to make a change. At the same time, you start thinking about how you can start integrating more and more services, third-party services. There's a lot of great ways that a cloud management system that is effectively cloud native can integrate with other like-minded cloud-based services. The bottom line benefit of cloud is that it does make management easier. It helps simplify the onboarding of devices you would configure on site. It helps improve and make more efficient the standard types of configuration changes or configurations in general that you'd make. Again, to make sure that you can do these things centrally without having to distribute your workforce. That sounds ideal, but what do you do in situations where IT requirements won't allow network management from the cloud? Yeah, that's a great ask. So a lot of times there's organizations that can't go to the cloud just yet. And that's why the notion of supporting IoT services from a, an HP or a networking standpoint is not just tied to a cloud-based way of doing things, although it does make things a little bit easier from an integration point of view, from a visibility point of view. Uh, HPE or networking also supports a lot of great on-premises scenarios, and that's supported by various capabilities that we have delivered by Rupa OS, as well as other products that we support. That's great. That way organizations have choices and an easy upgrade path when they choose to go to the cloud later, either partially or completely. So in a nutshell, it sounds like ESP really reduces the cost and complexity for IT folks who now find themselves responsible for integrating IoT into campus networks. Yes, that's very true. When you start looking at Aruba ESP architecture as a whole, as well as various capabilities supported by our cloud uh, platform and specifically, uh, there's a lot of great IoT capabilities built in to the architecture. Uh, deploying HP Uber Networking's ESP capabilities is a huge advantage. There's a lot of great positive things that can be experienced from a security standpoint. Uh, we've made a number of great acquisitions and new product updates in, in the recent past. There's also great ways we can help advance sustainability as it relates to supporting IoT as well as other deployment and capabilities that are supported in our platform as well as uh, being able to take advantage of additional capabilities that we'll get into a little bit more deeply in future episodes. Isn't that right, Stephanie? Absolutely, Dave. And thanks again for joining me on this episode. Thank you to our listeners. And we're going to cover a lot more great IoT topics in this series, so be sure to subscribe if you don't already. Have a great day.